Welcome back, Board Blurred Force One, with your boys Moa and Lottie, and this is the Supercast. The Supercast, where we talk about all things superhero in our pop culture media, and that's movies, TV shows, video games. We talk about the news, do some speculation, all of that good nerdy stuff. And before we get into the podcast today, do us a favor, get down there, hit like on this video, or if you are listening to us on a podcasting platform, uh, leave a review. A five-star review would be dope. But whatever you think we deserve, we appreciate all of that. And uh, man, it, it is uh, a momentous week for superhero fans. We got uh, that trifecta of, of superhero shows all on the same uh, day. That's Invincible, Loki, and Gen V uh, with its uh, season finale. Also, we're in preparation for the Marvels, which comes out uh, in about a week from now. So, and uh, so this is uh, quite a time to be a, a superhero fan. But uh, before we get into talking about our the week's news, uh, Lottie, my friend, how you doing today, sir? And uh, what you been up to, nerdy? Uh, besides 100, 100% of Spider-Man. Nerd! Uh, <laughs> you spent been, the time uh, to 100% it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I've been uh, building... Well, upgrading my brother's computer for him, so nice. So that's really much it. That's really, you know, that's really nice of you because I'd have been like, "You're you're a nerd. You should be able to." It's it's like building your own PC is like building as like a Jedi building a lightsaber. And if you're if you call how you call yourself a nerd and you haven't done that for yourself at least once. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you you just you picked up somebody's lightsaber like, well, that's good enough. It's it's not the same. <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Uh, I dude, my, my nerdiness has has been pre- pretty limited this week. I think I've just been, been watching TV. Uh, really, uh, I haven't. I want to play some Street Fighter, but I've just been I've been just busy working on the channel and doing stuff around the house. But uh, to th- to that end, I did end up watching the season finale of Star Trek Lower Decks, is one of, which is one of my favorite shows on TV right now, and it's awesome. Uh, great uh, season finale. Can't wait to review that final episode. Uh, so you guys get up on that if you're if you're a nerd like that. So anyway, uh, we're going to uh, talk about our superhero stuff this week. We got, uh, it's it's quite a week for news. There, uh, you know, there's some big, uh, a run really big story we're going to talk about. But before that, uh, we're going to talk about Lottie's further thoughts about Spider-Man 2 uh, after having 100%ed it. Uh, what's what's his thoughts on uh, on that game? Uh, DC's Creature Commandos gets, gets a release update. A fun little uh, uh, nerd discussion. We're going to talk about, uh, instead of Omni-Man versus Homelander, we're going to talk about a far more interesting fight, which is who wins between... Uh, the Powerpuff Girls and Omni Man. Uh, there's a delay on a certain DC, an upcoming DC TV show. Uh, Daredevil: Born Again gets some uh, behind-the-scenes changes, hopefully for the good. Uh, and then we're gonna go into I would dare say the biggest story of the week, which is all of the f- drama, all of the the creative issues going on over at marvel studios a big article by variety and we're just going to break down some of the things that were talked about in there um about uh wonder man and uh blade and all of these other things that are going on so uh lottie we got a got a pretty good amount of stuff to talk about you ready to get into it yeah i'm ready all right well, let's get it so i i'm gonna more or less just sit back for this one we know marvel spider-man 2 a game which is uh, critically acclaimed uh, is also by the fans is pretty well acclaimed. It's just it's going gangbusters right now, and I you know I for one cannot wait to play it in about three or four years when a PlayStation Five is reasonably priced and uh, I have time. Or <laughs> or 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 when it goes on the PC, which will be probably next year or two years from now. Yeah when it's reasonably priced down to like 30 or you know 20 or 30 dollars so like in three or four years uh i'll be i can't wait to play it then but until then i'm just gonna have to uh rely on my good friend lottie and his you know being a hardcore gamer 
he has done, uh, you know, what he set out to do, which is to 100% the game. And so, uh, having finished the game completely, I wanted to hear, and I want us to, uh, our audience to hear more about what you have to say about the game, uh, where it sits in, you know, in uh, superhero games, superhero properties, and just, you know, get make your pitch. Why should people be playing this? If you are a Spider-Man fan, if you legitimately call yourself a Spider-Man fan, and you are not a shit stain of a human being, <laughs> this is the game for you to play. This is the definitive Spider-Man experience. It is everything that you will want in a Spider-Man game is in this game. Like this, I am a diehard Spider-Man fan, and I've seen almost every single Spider-Man show. There's probably some deep cut shows that I haven't seen. I've seen every single Spider-Man movie. I played almost every single Spider-Man game. This is the best Spider-Man product ever released ever and it is by a large margin it's not like i'm it, spider verse no it is i'm it is i'm not even it's not even a discussion and everybody that i know who has played the game all agrees there's nothing spider-man related that comes even close to this game it is that good it is that good and the reason why i say if you're not a shit stain of a human being that if you're one of those people that is a normal human being and understands that gay people and trans people exist in this planet then yeah you won't be bothered by the game because there are some characters that goes like after spider-man saves them they go like oh uh my my uh, it was a man he'll be like my you're one of my uh bo you're my boyfriend's favorite and there's some people go like oh my god why did they put this in this game and i'm like are you you're just a shit stain of a human being gay people <laughs> exist bro you're you're just a shitty human being if that literally pisses you off there was one there was one mission where spider-man helps this guy who is gay uh ask his boyfriend out to prom and i'm like who cares? I'm like, are you, are y'all really this upset about it? And it, it kind of just makes me realize that there are terrible human beings that still exist on this planet that are dispressed if they see somebody gay or trans. You know, it's just, it's, it's sad, but it's true. But like I said, if you're a normal human being like me and Maurice, which I'm sure our audience is, you will absolutely enjoy this game. I 100 percent it. And man, I do not regret it. The only thing I regret, actually, I take that back. I do regret it because damn it. I want to play more. I want a mission mode. <laughs> I, if, man, if there was a mission mode, I swear to God, I'll be still playing this game. Too. I would still be playing this game right now. Oh, man, I, I can't. When DLC comes out day one, when I'm serious, when DLC drops day one purchase, I, I don't give a fuck how much it is. I'm buying it. I might just not have to buy lunch for a cup for, for a few days. <laughs> I will buy that DLC. I mean, man, it is, it is not just the best Spider-Man. It is an amazing video game at the same time. I was telling my friend Maurice, I mean, not Maurice, not uh, Anthony, that they somehow created a blockbuster game in movie together. They somehow did it. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And uh, I don't want to spoil the game because I want people who are listening to this to actually play the game. I don't want to ruin the game. But we all know, of course, we all know in the um, in the promotional material, you know the symbiote is in the game. And I'll tell you, this symbiote is the definitive symbiote. It is the most powerful Venom ever introduced in comics. Like, this Venom is god tier powerful like i'm like he is like legit like i will put this venom is an avengers villain yeah too bad like, the, too bad the avengers powerful. aren't dead and or or something like that in this universe <laughs> yeah they're sort of like either dead or gone in this universe but like straight up this venom could be an avengers villain like he's like i think i will take this venom over age of ultron mcu like dead ass in a fight right 
our Ultron from the MCU. I mean, yeah, I will take Age of Ultron MCU. I will take Venom over that. That that is like think about that Age of Ultron, and like how he was about to do that. This Venom is way more powerful and worse than that. Yeah, that's. I mean, I think Venom as as a character is pretty cool. They really upgraded him and and his power set in the comics in the in the last like decade. And of course, they introduced Null, the god of the symbiotes, and uh, the the Necro Sword and all that other stuff. So I'm I'm glad they took some cues uh, that really kind of upped his game. How about Craven? I heard a lot about Craven in this this. Uh, game also but not a, not a whole lot of detail just that it's he's a you know possibly the most terrifying version of craven definitive craven imagine craven with the super soldier serum uh, i yes. mean i always thought craven was pretty dope just but i mean just on the fact that you know he's just like i i need to challenge myself i'm gonna i'm gonna hunt the the most dangerous game of all man like that i mean that's pretty cool but like Apparently he's taken out super villains in this in this uh in this yeah. game. Yeah. Like, like I said, imagine Craven with the super soldier serum. Like he is that powerful. Like he's like he can straight up like tank a punch from Spider Man. Right. Like he is like like I knew he was strong, but then when they I saw that part, I was like, ooh. <laughs> like, right. This like imagine Craven, the Craven you know. But he has super strength and super agility. Like it is ridiculous. So in other words, this he's Craven be, is. In other words, he's going to be like the Craven we're going to see in the Sony in the movie next year. <laughs> yeah, this Craven <laughs> is this Craven is scary. Like this Craven is extremely intimidating. When I like I was like when I first saw that he was in the game, I was like, hmm. I was like, then I saw him. I was like, oh, oh. Yeah, I, I understand he's fighting like Electro and stuff like that. I'm like, okay. I, I to be honest, I don't. I, I'm not saying this this hasn't happened. I just don't remember it from uh you know from the comics. I don't know that I've ever seen Craven go after villains like that. Being like he's always like I'm gonna fight fight the heroes because they're strong. But I'm like, there's literally some world ending threats on the villain side. You don't want to go after them, but apparently in this one he does and put Spider-Man in a weird position of having to defend bad guys. Uh, so yeah, I, that Cra sounds Craven, cool. Craven in this game is some, for some reason, he's looking for the hunt of all hunts. Probably he's looking he's for a prey or something. <laughs> probably dying of, of, of an inoperable disease or something. He's like, I'm going to do this last thing before I die. Probably. I don't know. Keep my mouth, keep my I mean, shut. you don't have to say anything. <laughs> look, look yeah. if they if they are cribbing from Craven's last hunt, that's not a bad place to borrow from. You know, not not at all. This sounds cool. It looks cool. I've liked what I've seen of it uh, in clips and everything. I just I'm I'm too uh, I'm not enough of a gamer, like a consistent gamer, to spend the money on on a PlayStation Five and the game. You know what I'm saying? It literally, like, I literally need, you know, a good reason to get both of them. And right now there's none. It's just, I, as much as I loved the game and everything, I like Spider-Man, the original one on PlayStation 4 also. Didn't get that until, I literally didn't play that game until they had it as a bundle with my PlayStation 4. So, yeah, <laughs> which is, which is cool. Look, I, I, you know, I absolutely want to play it just when it's, Thirty dollars. <laughs> so anyway, well, that sounds cool, man. I'm, I, I'm, uh, you know, much respect for one hundred percenting it and doing your thing with it, and you know, just it sounds to me like they it delivered everything you wanted. So I love that. You know, I always love when these things hit hit right. I all those those things I saw online about it about how it's glitched up and and broken and everything. It sounded like it was people making a big deal out of nothing and it looks like looks to me like that's true so yeah it has this little it has just glitches here and there like there was one mission where i think everybody happened to where it was like you have to reset from last checkpoint 
I every it, it has its small little glitches, but it's not like I don't give a damn what anybody says. It's not Starfield. It's not all these other games that have like where the game is almost unplayable type glitches. It's just people just people for some reason just don't want to see this game do well. And I don't know why. I don't know why they're like that. Because I mean, it's woke trash. That's why. <laughs> and it's it's not even really like it's not like Spider Man is saying it's not like Spider Man or or Miles or anybody saying black rights or trans there's nothing in the game to show anything that is just woke. It just shows a depiction of what a, it has a the regular Look, human nope. life. Miles Miles Morales is in it. It's woke trash. There you go. <laughs> I do uh just as a speculation to finish this up. If they do have DLC, is, is there any direction that you think they may be leaning? I've seen some stuff about someone finding a hidden, uh, I guess, you know, a uh, hidden uh, room or something involving the hand and that, you know, that there may be references to Daredevil in there. Like, is there any direction you think they might go with the DLC? There's a rumor of the, uh, of, uh, of, um, there's different rumors. I don't want to. Like Devil Daredevil, I don't want to say anything because it kind of ruined the game. Right. Of what I think the DLC will be. I I just but, want, I want them to in, in, integrate across the Spider Verse somehow. Uh, that would be dope. I'll uh, shut. <laughs> it would, that would be kind of cool if they in, in, introduced that the the whole thing with the hand and and that would be. Dope. I mean, you I know. mean, here's the thing though. Here's the thing, uh, Maurice. We know that it's integrated because Spider-Man PS4 was in across yeah, yeah, the Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I, actually, and I actually want to ask Peter from from you know this Peter on this one. Why the hell? Why the hell would you chase down Miles? You literally know Miles Morales. But he wasn't York. there. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't actually. He wasn't actually there. Yeah, I'll just say that. Okay. I. I mean, I. I will be really interested in, like if if there's if there's a bit of smart work at Sony and I believe Sony is has lots of really really smart people running the show running the Spider-Man show there's got to be a way to make make the connection to across the Spider-Verse a lot more explicit and to the other Spider-Man stuff. I I just I have to believe it. I, they they seem like they got a, a good idea about what to be doing with Spider-Man so uh but we'll see. I'll <laughs> I'll tell you off air. And um I will also say this too. Uh dang, I just it just slipped my mind. I was about to say something. Well Oh, I'm there's there's another I will say this. There is another deep cut Spider Man character that is new in this whole thing of Spider Man that is introduced at the end of the game. Hmm. And she's female. I, I I hope it's Silk. <laughs> It'd be cool if it was Silk, but or it. I mean, honestly, this is my last bit of speculation. Just because this this is kind of open up, you know, this thought in my head is there. Does this pave the way for a an a, an Insomniac Spider Verse game? Would would this pave the way to? Because I I love Across the Spider Verse and. I would dearly love to play a Spider Verse game. That's that's I think, that's based within within this game's like engine. Obviously, they figured out how to make Spider Man work as a as a playable character, and how you know how you execute all of his moves and everything. I would dearly love to have across the Spider Verse translate into that. I I, I will say this: uh, they're they're making a uh, what's the call game. A, a Wolverine, uh, Wolver which is game. In, which is apparently and, is in in universe. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So I mean, that I guess what I'm saying is, should should they just give all the games to Insomniac? Maybe that's what I should be asking. Yes, Marvel <laughs> just give the rights to Sony. Like, just give them your gaming rights to Sony because look at what Spider Man has done. They're making a Wolverine game, which I have full confidence is going to be good. 
the uh, creators of God of War want to make a Thor game. I mean, they, uh, they kind of did. <laughs> yeah, that's what it, 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 there's a lot of there's a lot of things that the uh, like I will really will love for Marvel, especially right now that, you know, the, the movies may not be or the TV shows may not be doing as well. Get the gaming, get the gaming back up, get your gaming little to get your gaming funds going up. You know what I mean? It mm -hmm. can get people back excited because there's a lot of people gaming nowadays. It's a it is a hobby that as much as people want to complain how expensive games are, which, you know, this might be more of a gamer cast. You guys <laughs> suck it up and quit being babies because you guys are lucky. Games have not increased according to inflation at all. Like games should be. I remember I was watching a, um, an a, a, a economic analyst say games should be over $100 right now. But you mean going back to the only, 90s? <laughs> because if you because like I was telling people, games were fifty dollars in the nineties. Fifty dollars in the nineties is a hundred dollars now. Yeah. Games should be over a hundred dollars right now, but they have not increased in price according to inflation. They're still quite cheap. So don't complain about game prices. Like I tell people this all the time. People say, How much would you spend? How much would you pay for a game that you actually want? I said, I'll spend over a hundred. If it's if it's an actual good game, right. like Spider Man, I would pay over a hundred for that game because I got my money's worth out of it. God of War, all that, but like Fortnite, fuck no. <laughs> yeah, but why, why I digress. You? Yeah, no, no, it makes sense. But I, I mean, I'm a cheap, I'm a cheap bastard. So <laughs> either way, well, that's that's pretty cool. Um, uh, I don't think uh, you know, I don't. Like I said, I don't think I'll get a chance to play it for a long time. But we're going to keep an eye on this. Uh, keep an eye out on the DLC and everything like that. Uh, but it's it's cool. If you got a chance, go out there and check out that uh, game. So, uh, real another uh, a bit of quick news here. So, apparently, uh, according to the people who are working on the animation for it, DC's Creature Commandos was supposed to come out next year. But nah, it's not happening apparently. And apparently it's only seven episodes. That's weird. Seven ep 22 minute episodes. But uh they're saying it's coming out in 2025 instead. Lottie, is this a surprise at all? And and are you disappointed by th by this? Uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, we all knew that the the stuff coming from the strike and all that was going to there's going to be some delays that were going to happen. You know, we it's it's sort of like the uh the stuff with the gaming industry during the pandemic. No one they didn't outright say the games were delayed, but there was no news coming out, so we kind of knew that the games were going to get delayed. And it's sort of like with this. It just expect almost every single thing that was supposed to come out as that you're expecting next year, it's going to take about 6 so about 6 months added extra time on the positive side yeah well i think pr part of the reason why this this is probably happening is because of partly because of the strikes because yes animation is not affected by the strikes but voice acting is and every single at voice actor in this uh you know in this show are regular you know actors who you know, are going to actually play themselves in, you know, in the DC universe. Yeah. So obviously if there's a strike going on, they're not going to be working on that. Now I, I could be wrong, but perhaps that they, there's a, there's a waiver or something like that where they could have. But I think this also is an indication that maybe the writing wasn't done on, on the show necessarily. So, yeah. or rewrites or something. So James Gunn couldn't write on the show also. And I think this also may be, and this may not be as good uh, uh, a sign that James Gunn's hands-on nature may actually be, you know, hindering some of the forward movement simply because he is right. He's doing all the writing on the, that show. He's writing on Peacemaker. And he, I do believe, and I, maybe I'm, I'm mistaken, I think he's writing on Waller. And, of course, he wrote, he did finish the the. You know, at least one draft of the Superman uh, movie. 
So that's a lot of stuff and uh, to be doing in addition to his other role, you know, role as being the creative, you know, driving force behind the DC universe. So that that there could be, uh, you know, uh, that could be a weakness in in this particular setup. Just hit his his hands on nature may actually slow down uh, some movement on some things, and perhaps mm-hmm. he needs to start delegating or uh, getting, you know writing outlines for it, but you know having showrunners and and writing room that break down his his stuff um but i'll have to say i'm not surprised by this like at all in fact i would say pretty much anything we were expecting to, to get next year that wasn't already deep into production or or already wrapped filming we're just not gonna get uh, is where you can expect six months or so delay, and and the strike is still going on. You know, the SAG strike is still going on. It has not in, ended. Um, as of you know, it's going to be Friday tomorrow, and that was the the drop dead date, so to speak, to complete negotiations. Or Hollywood, you know, the executives are going to just be like, well, let's just let's just try again and. You know, in January, because there's no point to to continuing negotiations, we are not going to be able to do our seasons um, or get anything really done uh, for the rest of the year. So I, I don't know, man. This it's this it sucks, but also I completely get it. And also, I have to be honest. Like it's it's cool. Creature Commandos is going to come out first, but uh, Superman Legacy is what I'm looking forward to. Like yeah, that's, that's the that's that the is one. the that is the most important. Of, Everything in DC does not matter. That movie has to be good. There's, I don't want to hear anything about it from anything anybody else. That movie has to be good. There's no excuse. It has to be good if they want this new universe to be good. And it, and here's the problem. Not only does it have to be good, it has to be probably excellent because the first week, some people are not going to watch it out of sheer hate that Henry Cavill's not in it. So word of mouth has to be good on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate, it, but now that's, I, they have a, you know, DC in general has an uphill battle. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not mad that it, there's a delay again. I, like I'm really want to look forward to Superman legacy creature commandos is going to be a TV show. So I'm, I mean, obviously I do want to check that out and see what DC got going on, but you know, whatever they need to do to make it as good as possible. And, and in fact, I think that's my, I honestly have to say that is my attitude about both DC and Marvel going forward, which is y'all pump the brakes and, and take your time. And because I'd rather you take, I'd rather be disappointed that it's coming out later than I expect than to get it when I expect and it's not as good. So you're know, like, you know, it's all good, but just take your time and do it right uh, as, the, as the song goes. So anyway, if we get some more information about Creature of Manos, We'll let you guys know. Lot it's, it's time for a bit of fun uh, nerd speculation, nerd talk. Uh, the things that us you know, oh, comic book you know, nerds, we, you know, we love to do this. We, we were just talking about Omni-Man versus Homelander and how um, you know Homelander would get washed, rinsed, repeated by, by Omni-Man, right? Uh, well, that <laughs> seems to have inspired some other people to ask, an even more burning and pressing question, one that really gets you know hits deep into the heart of of you know nerd culture. That <laughs> oh that that God. this is a question that needs to be answered, and where you land on it could be as important. <laughs> you know, it could be as important as if you were into Twilight. Uh, you know, Team Jacob or Team Edward, and it's this. You ready? Mm-hmm. Who wins in a fight, Omni Man? Who, who we've established will beat the hell out of Homelander or the Powerpuff Girls. And oh. you're like, there's a, apparently there's a right answer to this <laughs> that I wasn't aware of because <laughs> now look, I, I know the, the knee jerk reaction is come on, man. I'm Omni man. But apparently the Powerpuff Girls are OD that apparently Throughout there, I didn't watch the. I watched some of it when it first came out. I didn't watch. I didn't complete the series or anything like that. But apparently, they were they were OP. Like they were actually like fighting demons and world-ending threats and everything like that, and and going in. 
<laughs> you know, they even said, do you know, when I was reading this, this, uh, this thread on, on Twitter, people were like, oh, y'all, y'all don't even, the, you know, don't even mess with the, the worst, the most dangerous one of the Powerpuff Girls. And I was like, which one is that? They're like, don't fuck with Buttercup. Cause when she gets mad, it's on. And I was like, you talking about, oh, it's, it's or, or it's a, it's a, I'm sorry, Bubbles. Buttercup's the green one, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, they're no, no. You think Buttercup is? They're like, no, Bubbles. When she gets uh, properly angry, apparently, uh, you know, if, if it wasn't a power, uh, a kids show, would probably be punching holes and through people's chests. And she, she, in other words, she'd be perfect in the boys. So, but there was <laughs> one episode of Powerpuff Girls where there was like a training machine, and. It and it, it scales like up to villains, and she broke the knob, and it went up to eleven, and she was in it by itself. She killed eleven world-ending uh, entities in the simulation by herself. Right. Yeah. Like <laughs> that sugar and spice like, don't but, play, but, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, what what was it called? Uh, Chemical X, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but. but Okay, you're like, all right, what's why are we talking about this though? It's just just nerds talking on the internet, and it's fun, but you know what? Even the Invincible official, uh, you know, Twitter account weighed in on it. You know, that's very important, and they seem to agree. The Powerpuff Girls would take it over Omni Man. That seems to be uh, what they what they were saying. Uh. And they had a nice little picture of the of the Powerpuff Girls and and a beat up <laughs> Nolan <laughs> that I thought was fun. Uh, there's, he said, "There's no, there's no." It said, "Think Mark, they are made from sugar spice and everything nice and, and chemical X. There's no stopping them." Uh, I kind of love this. I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. I love stuff like this. I love nerd talk like this, but it's just so unexpected, and I'm like. Y'all semi make me want to go back and watch the Powerpuff Girls because I, I I hadn't watched it in so long, and they are basically like, you know, overpowered. You know, Goku. Like, could they take Goku? I think people are asking. But yeah, they could eat, beat Omni Man, but could they beat Goku? And I'm like, I don't know. Probably, maybe. I don't know which of Goku are we talking about. I honestly don't think the Powerpuff Girls can beat Omni Man. Like, in all seriousness. Even though the, I, I, I almost sit there joking, but I think they will give Omni-Man everything he wants and Omni-Man will probably adopt him. You know, he'd be like, oh, you guys will be an asset to the Viltrumite Empire. Because, man, they, the, the, the Powerpuff Girls are powerful. We all know that they, they will, they, they will shit stomp Omni. I mean, not Omni Man, uh, Homelander. Homelander will pop up thinking their little kids in bubbles will just pimp slap them and hold <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Homelander will just pimp slap him. He'll be like, well, you think you could do that to me? What's what because were, I was gonna say, what were the name of the boys, the 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 boy version of, of the Powerpuff Girls? I forget what they were called because they were villains, right? Yeah, uh, Butch. Hey, let me look up the Rowdy <laughs> Rough Boys. Oh. <laughs> <The rowdy>, uh, <laughs> uh, I, on, this y'all y'all can't see because but you, I I have said I'm the biggest grin right now. This is the shit. So what I, is this is the shit I live for as as a as a nerd as a comic book nerd. Dave I again. love stuff oh. like this. Brick Boomer and Butch. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, and the Rowdy Rough. <laughs> listen, as a boy, the Rowdy Rough Boys episode was my episode. I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't beat the the Powerpuff Girls couldn't beat them. They could they you know how they beat them? They beat them with cringe. That's yeah, how they just, beat them. They just like they they just like try to kiss them or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they kissed them and they died of cringe. They literally died so of good. cringe. I, I, that, I you know when I think about when I think about the Powerpuff Girls, on, this is semi on the real, but you know I like to you know talk shit about the anti woke people. Powerpuff Girls right now, if you, if they, you know, these same people that are so upset about woke shit now, I don't, th I don't think they, they'd be able to handle themselves with Powerpuff Girls because they are, 
as they are as Mary, you know, uh, what they call Mary Sue as you can be. There's, there's almost nothing that they can't really do. And they, they are and, really, they really are, you know, I think they really operate well on the fact that they're basically Superman, but there's, they just have cool ass personalities and everything like that. It's, it's Powerpuff Girls actually is like, what if Superman, what if, what if the Ninja Turtles, but also Superman? Uh, and, and you want to know something interesting about the Powerpuff Girls? What's that? That in the actual lore, they're they're actually clones of Professor Utonium's original daughter. Well, that's sad. who is black. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, her, yeah. Her name is uh uh Blistina, Blistina Utonium. She is his actual biological daughter, and she was hit by uh radiation and she was uh she was uh what's it called she was sealed away because her powers she can't control her powers so what happened is he took some of her dna to make a cure for her but chemical x accidentally got into it and in and instead it created the power of girls who are three are clones and they represent uh parts of her personality that is that's a lot of deep cut lore <laughs> i was just yeah like, i just i just figured he test tubed some babies and that was that he he did no. he did a vault but like not not awful so yeah she was the original. She's the he's yeah. He is. She's a uh, Professor Utonium's actual daughter. She's a teenager, and it was kind of cool, you know, that like when they unsealed her, and it was kind of cool to have that. You know, the the, the Powerpuff Girls actually had an older sister, but you know, the fans were like, "What? What is she's she's overshadowing the, the Powerpuff Girls?" So they written so they had to write her off by saying she. Her, that the, that the Powerpuff Girls are enough to save the world without her. So she she now she's like Captain uh, Captain Marvel and protects the universe. Nice, <laughs> of course. Well, I will say, I'm I'm Team Powerpuff Girls on this one. Nolan, get the hell off off the planet, or or they're gonna kick your ass. So <laughs> bring the Viltru <laughs> Might Empire. I wish you would. So anyway, I thought that was fun. So um, uh, we'll we'll keep an eye out on more fun little uh nerd discussions like that we'll definitely have some more of those in the future a lot another uh quick little thing uh sorry to tell you but the penguin is gonna is getting delayed sorry we're not gonna get it next year um oh i kind of i already knew that was happening unfortunately it's unfortunate but i kind of knew that was I, happening. i sound like a broken record but thanks to due to the strikes What's, and the Penguin, by the way, was in the midst of, of filming. They were, you know, they shut down uh, filming when the writer strike happened. So yeah, not getting that until probably 2025. Um, that's, uh, I mean, like, I, I don't know what else to say about that. S big surprise, not you know, they couldn't work, so they're not going to be f finished on time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean. I, again, I'm happy if as long as we get it. But let's just say that. Yeah. Because uh, there some stuff I don't think is going to necessarily come back. We'll talk about that later with Marvel. Uh, the the strikes are most definitely have have probably pushed you know forced a few hands here and there. So uh, we'll you know we'll keep an eye out on Penguin and see what's going to uh, go on there. We'll let you guys know uh, when they are uh, slated to get back to work and when they're uh, expecting to release. Uh, let's move over to Marvel. And that is, uh, we've been talking, we talked about Daredevil, uh, the problems they have on Daredevil. You know, they, they stopped production, scrapped a lot of things. They fired a bunch of people. There's just a bunch of stuff going on in Marvel with, with regards to Daredevil. Apparently Kevin Feige wasn't happy with what, what he saw. Uh, that this show that they thought they were getting wasn't, you know, barely had any Daredevil in it. So they're they're like, we we've got to find new writers. We got to you know figure out how to write this ship. Well, apparently they have uh, figured it out because they have hired uh, new 
uh, I guess a, a showrunner and some directors. So uh, the showrunner uh, in question, I don't know this person, but Dario Scardapane, I guess. But <clears throat> what, why you should care and be interested and, and hopeful is that uh, he worked on uh, the Jack Ryan show on uh, on Amazon Prime, which is, you know, I've seen a little bit of it. It's pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. And also worked on The Punisher. Uh, I believe was a writer on The Punisher. And so now they're uh, he's going to be a showrunner for the series, which, yay, I'm just going to say yes, thank fucking God, because they haven't had showrunners on these shows. Not really, right? They They sort of had showrunners, but they've been... Not the way they should. But by that I mean, in TV, the showrunner is is to a TV show the way that a director is to a movie. So, you know, and by that meaning, almost all the creative decisions, in fact, all the creative decisions run through them one way or another. And so having an actual showrunner to get the, the ship together is great. Um, and that... This guy's resume is pretty apparently pretty stellar, uh, especially having worked on the Netflix Punisher, which most people agree is, if it's not, it's you know possibly the second or third best out of them, but possibly second best out of those shows. Also, they're getting two directors, a directing team, uh, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, who, uh, among other things, directed episodes of Loki season two. I don't know which episodes they have have done. But, you know, aside from my just being like, where are they going with this, with the show? I thought Loki's, the directing on, the actual directing on the show has been quite good. Like, visually, it's been, been very well done. They, I think that the actual directing has been good. It's just the story hasn't been totally getting me into the recent, most recent episode. So, they're getting talent, Lottie. They said, hey, let's, let's get it together. Let's, let's fix this up. Let's make this show what it's supposed to be. And they got a bit of talent that knows something about dealing with that side of the Marvel Universe, the street level side of the Marvel Universe. So, Lottie, you hear all this. How are you feeling about it? It's about time, man. It's about time. I agree. It, it's, t it's time that they start taking their shows a little bit, you know, doing a little bit better when it comes to, like you said, adding showrunners and stuff. Because before they were just like making the show and say oh, it looks pretty good let's let's get it out there nah man you 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 gotta do the tr the try to true i understand that you created this awesome cinematic universe but you also you you gotta use what has been working that you know hbo paramount which is cbs and all these people have been doing for for decades upon decades of how they were able to create TV shows and have them be good. Some of them were not always good, but they they've they've created more hits than than bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm happy that they're doing this better. They're starting all over for uh, Born Again, and because it, it ha like the Daredevil show has to be good, especially since they were not bringing back the original people from the original show. Uh, well, so they're bringing back some, and some aren't, so, <laughs> which is weird. And I, I'm tr trying to figure out what's their reasoning behind some of these things. Um, <clears throat> clearly, it's going to be, I think, uh, stylistically, it's going to be similar. I don't know if it's necessarily, you know, content-wise, it's going to be similar. So, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm happy about this. And also, probably they're going to they're gonna keep as much as they can from the you know the the stuff they've already shot and try to make it into something that that is you know relates to the the entirety of the season uh properly so um i don't know this looks good and, and uh we'll we'll keep an eye on this uh, let you guys know when it's going to be releasing and any more information uh whatever uh comes out so this leads us this okay this is what we've been building up to this is the actual story we need to be talking about uh Lottie, that you you saw it. There's this Variety article talking about all of the stuff going on behind the scenes at at uh, Marvel. We we kind of knew there was there was stuff going down. Uh, Bob Iger Bob Iger came back to uh, Disney to run Disney, 
and he said straight up, hey, y'all been putting out too much stuff. We need to, you know, slow down, concentrate on quality, write the ship, get everything together. So he's saying this as, as the CEO of Disney. Meanwhile, you know, there's there's rumors about, you know, strife at Marvel and things going on behind the scenes. Uh, the whole thing with Jonathan Majors kind of blows up. You know, this stuff with Daredevil uh, is, you know, happens. They're, they're delaying stuff. There's there's just a lot of turmoil, things we don't, we're not used to seeing or hearing about from Marvel Studios. Now, apparently, you know, everyone's jumping up, you know, jumping up and down, trying to, you know, scoop or, you know, get some kind of news out about what's really going on uh, back there. So that's, that's what the whole variety thing is about. I figured, you know, we'll go through the article. I'm not going to read the whole article, but we'll go through and just kind of touch on, you know, the the major parts. Uh, so Lottie, Jonathan Majors and his whole situation, which, by the way, I mean, he's, he's slated to be back in court later on this month. I'm not exactly sure when because I'm not TMZ and I don't, I don't keep up with that stuff. But apparently he's later on this month. Um, and... Do you, you remember when we first started talking about it? Other people started chiming in about, yeah, he sucks and like he did this and all this other stuff like that. So there's, there's, you know, this case is going to bring a lot of stuff to the to the forefront. Um, but apparently because of his whole situation and they went all in on making him the centerpiece bad guy for the Marvel universe, and now that this is coming out, there's a possibility that it's going to essentially make it impossible for them to keep on, keep on dealing with him that they have just, you know, been floating around the idea of, of changing, pivoting to Dr. Doom being the big, big bad rather than Kang. Um, but they haven't, haven't, uh, pulled the trigger on it yet, obviously. So a lot of, I mean, it's, I feel like we saw this coming. How do you, what do you think? <sighs> Do, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk too much and say I assume, but it's just some things that I've saw from what's going on in the case. I haven't been paying attention too hard, but a little bit then it seems like he might win. But there is a contingency. But it's it's good that Marvel has a little bit of a contingency plan. That it's Doctor Doom. In my opinion, in my opinion, they should have just they should have just did the scrolls. I think. Uh, uh phase four and phase five should have been the scrolls that was my opinion we all know how that went unfortunately probably the worst marvel tv show ever made just being honest it was not good yeah <laughs> I, I would agree right. I, I wish that was i kind of wish because it was there but dr doom is a good is a good backup plan it's just how do you how do you how do you scratch this especially with loki season two out yeah i mean well they also could very well just recast which i would i would not be bothered if they recast jonathan matrix um it i, I mean, mean I, you can that's that's very easy to recast because yeah. we could ju they can just have it that he kills all the other kings I this mean, king or, kills or, all the other I mean, it, you could just replace him and then just be and don't don't make a deal out of it 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 would not bother me um, as much as I like Jonathan Majors as an actor, I think I, Yahya Abdul Mateen could do the job that he's doing, <clears throat> which uh, a sort of uh, not really related, but uh, just as a quick aside, one of the things I heard this week is that they might they might be scrapping a bunch of things that are you know either in pre production or maybe even in production, and that the Wonder Man show might be one of the victims of not just the you know not just the uh, strikes but also this re you know, kind of uh, this reconsideration of how they're doing business at marvel so like it's a twofer they you know the the strikes happen they can't work so they were you know they were shooting they can't work and then also you know bob Iger and, and kevin feige are like we need to retool and, and figure out what exactly we're we're trying to do here and so Wonder Man kind of goes by the wayside. <clears throat> I think that'd be unfortunate because I like the Wonder Man character and I like Yaya Abdul-Mateen. 
And they could obviously they could keep him on as a character within the universe, but they also could just be like, forget Wonder Wonder Man. We're just gonna make him our king, which I, again wouldn't be bothered by. I think he's good. Um, but all this stuff with with Jonathan Majors is also not, isn't just because of the arrest, but also because Quantum Mania underperformed and that the MCU trajectory seems to be you know on a downside and also let's be let's be fair um a lot of people were just like eh the MCU's over end game happened all this other stuff happening afterwards hasn't been cohesive enough so that people feel like they have to come see all these things and the addition of Disney Plus stories you know Disney Plus only stories as a requirement to be in the MCU isn't necessarily has not turned out to be a good a good plan it could have been a good plan but there's just been so much and people are just sort of you know underwhelmed by some of it and so it's sort of given a downward trajectory to uh, the mcu and here's my thing Mm -hmm. they could have kept the movies they can keep the movies i mean not the movies the tv shows but don't make them integral parts of the of the of the movie cinematic universe. Make it DLC. You know what I mean? Like it's expanding the universe. Don't make it like you 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 they literally made a movie that is coming out this year that you have to have watched three Marvel TV. Like that's coming out not this year, in a few weeks. Yeah. That you have to have watched three Marvel TV shows. To even understand what the hell is going on, right? <clears throat> like, which you, I th- you see what I'm yeah, saying? That which I think they could have solved this by integrating them into the movies. You know, the, having these, they don't have to be in the movies for long. Just show up so that people are like, yeah. oh yeah, there's that character I saw. Like, like on the real, if they had just thoughtfully inserted these, you know, She Hulk and Miss Marvel and and Monica Rambo and all them. Just inserted them into the movies briefly. Didn't have to be a long time. Mm-hmm. Just just long enough for you to know, hey, they're characters that are important. They're there. And then if you want to know more about them, hey, go go watch the TV show. Exactly. Like you can have it that they show up like in a movie, and then the backstory is the TV show. Like I said, it's DLC. Right. You don't have to watch the TV show. To get, it's it's the same thing that that killed the uh, Kingdom Hearts. Like I always like I, I I compare the MCU to the Kingdom Hearts story because it is literally just the same way that the creator of Kingdom Hearts made it for you to truly understand Kingdom Hearts three. You had to have owned five other consoles. That is absolutely stupid. That is stupid, and that is stupid, and it killed Kingdom Hearts three. For it, and everyone even already said one of the first questions when Kingdom Hearts Four was coming out, they asked them, "Are there going to be any other uh, games that are coming out to any other thing that we need to get if we're going to have?" To? And he says, "No, no, there will be DLC that for Kingdom Hearts Three, and that's it." And Kingdom Hearts Four starts off exactly off of three. Thank you. Why should I have to own a PSP, a 3DS, a cell phone, a Game Boy Advance? Um, and I'm not making this up. I'm telling you the truth. A uh, PS3 to play to understand a story of that's going to happen in Kingdom Hearts three. That is, it's it's like I said. Why do you have to? Why is it that we have to see these TV shows to understand Marvel? Yeah. Like you said, just have it that they introduce and it, and they had their op- they had their chances. They could have easily introduced Monica uh, Monica Rambeau in freaking Wakanda Forever. Yep. Could have easily, she's easily introduced her into Wakanda forever. That she's one of the people of Shield helping. You know what I mean? I mean, it's so easy. And the same thing with um, uh, what's the chick's name? Miss uh, Marvel. Uh, uh, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel could have. I I would have liked it that Miss Marvel would have showed up in like uh. I think Shang Chi was the is the most reasonable. Shang Chi. Yeah. Shang Chi. Just, just yeah. briefly, it didn't have to be. <clears throat> it didn't have to be something big. Just. Briefly, so you know there's a connection. Because now we do know that there's a connection, you know, possibly between the Ten Rings and the Bangle. But you know what? <clears throat> this is 
just just a miscalculation i think on the part of, of marvel about how how much of a hold on the audience they really have and it didn't help that like just having so much to to put out the mandate to churn out product and try and doing it the marvel way rather than doing it the regular tv way just resulted in a lot of like okay and some misses um and so now we're you know they're talking about in the article now they're going into the marvels and the marvels is coming out next week it's not going to do well relative to the uh, first one for various reasons but one of them is of course that marvel is just kind of it hasn't been kicking ass like normal and so it, it's you know it has a downstream effect uh you've said before that you know guardians of the galaxy 3 should have been a billion dollar movie but it wasn't and it's a downstream effect of of marvel uh not more you know marvel fatigue whatever you want to call it you know ant man and the lost quantum mania should have in its sleep made 600 million dollars but it, it struggles to even make 500 million and so it's looking like captain marvel or you know the marvels is going to be sort of like that too <clears throat> and they <clears throat> they also mentioned something about uh the director nia da costa uh sort of in in the post-production phase you know going off to do you know to do another movie and, and i just this is as an aside i want to call this as and i'm sure the people that that wrote this article and you know that maybe they know a little bit more about the industry or something like that i i won't i won't say they don't but i'll just i'm just gonna call kind of call bullshit on this and that this this is the reason why <clears throat> When you, as a as an actor, or a writer, or a director, or whatever, when you sign on, you 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 sign the contract to be a part of these projects. There's a time associated with. It. There's a time limit associated with it because there's an understanding within the industry that everyone has a schedule, right? Because they have their next project they need to work on and the next one, and so their agents uh, kind of figure their schedule out so that. Hey, I have time to do this. I have time. To, and obviously the director is there, you know, through the whole process. But one thing that's not, you know, hasn't been noted or uh, in this article is that this uh, Nia DaCosta has been working on this movie f for a long ass time, like almost three years. Now you're asking somebody, you're asking a, a director to, uh, to, take three years of their lives to deal with because you remember they pushed this this thing has been pushed back because of the pandemic and because of the uh not the strikes but the, the pandemic has really pushed this back several times so you're asking a a director to commit three years of their lives to just doing this one thing right mm -hmm. and schedule and every time they move the date back that wasn't what they agreed to they agreed i'm going to spend a couple years to make this thing happen then i got another project to go on to right <clears throat> and someone i noticed this on, on twitter with somebody who was talking about this they were saying hey uh well why don't you you know you guys are giving nia da costa some shit about this the fact that she went uh, went to london because she had another project she needed to work on and she started you know while they were in post-production remember they've been in post-production for a long time now well over a year now it's been in post-production well over a year and a director doesn't necessarily have as much to do with it as you think. Maybe to come back for reshoots or whatever. But a director's not an editor. Director's not, you know, she doesn't necessarily have to be in the in the room to get this movie together. But they're giving her shit for going off to work on this other movie. When James Gunn literally was working on Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, uh and peacemaker and, you know went to start on guardians uh holiday special when peacemaker hadn't even wrapped filming yet and he was working on peacemaker before uh before uh was it suicide the suicide squad had finished post-production so it's possible as a director to go do other things while post-production is going on but they're giving her shit about this uh something i wanted to make note of why would they be doing that but this, because I feel like this article is, it's, it's trying to keep it real, but there's a little bit of dogpiling going on in this too. This is a, they see, 
it, it's it's sort of blood in the water shark shark situation, and uh, I I don't think that it's fair to say that Nia DaCosta to imply that she's somehow abandoning the project when in reality I'm certain she signed a contract to start working on this movie at a certain time, and I don't give I don't know if why people think that contracts can just be ignored just because Marvel signed a contract too, you know that she signed a Marvel contract. They're both contracts she needs to honor, and one of them involves the contract time, you know, terms being changed, and the other one doesn't. So, <clears throat> anyway, I'm not, I, I'm not trying to be a Nia DaCosta stand, but it seems bullshit to give her some shit about that when it's pretty clear that she has to honor her contracts. That's all I'm saying. Uh, either way, Miss Marvel, uh, probably not gonna make its money. <laughs> Can we? Is that fair to say? Not gonna make its money back. Uh, I mean, the movie the movie cost two two hundred and seventy five million dollars to make. Uh, that was gonna be a rough a rough going to make his money back, even if it was good. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, not really good. I meant like good when it comes to good sales. Like. Yeah, and plus it's gonna have this. It's gonna. It, it doesn't have the the stars to go out and market it like it it should. It doesn't have you know a big tent pole that it's wedged up against, and it's gonna have a big, well, big being relative. Let's let's just call it for real, a small but concerted effort by uh, the anti woke people who grifted on on hating on Brie Larson, uh, you know, for the last movie. Uh, last however many five six years have been grifting off that forever so they're gonna make their small but concerted effort to you know to drive people away from the movie as well uh and or to claim victory for that for when it doesn't do as well when it i think most people it's pretty clear that most people are kind of you know cold on marvel right now so almost every marvel thing has to it has to be excellent just to barely make it you know uh, so I think we'll we'll see about that uh, on the Marvels, but it it seems like right now, like they're trying they're trying to right the ship, and Feige is having to get in on that too, and then you know try to figure out you know what's important, what isn't important, try to get the whole visual effects situation uh, sorted out, try to get the whole uh, you know Jonathan Majors thing sorted out. And as I said before, figure out what projects actually need to be made and what what don't, you know. And mm -hmm. and to to get the the price the you know price down. Uh, there was a another thing they were talking about. Mahershala Ali almost left Blade because of of the problem with the scripts and the you know, and you know it had any, you know we it's been in development hell for a, a few you know four or five you know three four years now. And that he almost left because of how bad the scripts were, and that Feige had to step in personally to kind of get right the ship over there. Um, it, it's just stuff going on, Lottie. I mean, this. I of, I still don't get. I still don't get why Blade is PG thirteen. I I I just don't get it. That I think that that still is a bad decision. Like Blade should not be PG thirteen. Making it PG thirteen just takes away from what Blade is, especially nowadays. Like I was, like I was telling somebody, um, uh, a customer. She came into the store and she was wearing a Marvel TV shirt, and we were talking, and we got onto like how um, different ratings are nowadays compared to back in the day, and she didn't believe me when I told her like. PG-13, when I was a kid, is rated R now. And she was like, what? I said, go watch the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man. That is a rated R movie in today's day and age. There was people getting skewered, cut open. Like, that movie would not be rated. Like, I thought, look, look, look at the MCU movies that are PG-13. That's why I was like, because because um i also talked about this with somebody else and they were like oh blade being pg-13 is not too bad and i'm like pg-13 nowadays is not the pg-13 from when we were younger 
Like if it was PG thirteen back then, yeah, they could do it. But now, nah, well, it you, should be rated can, R. You can get away with some stuff. Like I think they can. We we saw the PG thirteen uh, Venom two, like they can get away with it. They just have to not have blood all over the place. They can, they have all the violence they want though. So I, I think they can. I think it'll be fine. They just can't okay. have all that blood going on. They have to. I saw. I watched Five Nights at Freddy's uh, over the weekend, and it it's PG thirteen and it's, like and, it? and a slat. No, it sucks. But uh, <laughs> it's not good. Uh, as people I, swear I, that movie is amazing. No, people are not. people are swear that, it's amazing. Well, I mean, I'm gonna. I intend to to talk about it on on the channel at some point. But no, it's not good. But there, it does have slasher violence in a PG thirteen setting, so you can do it. It's 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 not impossible. You just gotta be you gotta think about what you're doing. Um, but they're they're they've hired the writer of Logan, the Oscar nominated writer of Logan, Michael Green, to write to you know to write a, a fresh you know story for Blade. So there, that I mean that's good good movements there. But they're apparently planning to have it be. But, below a hundred million dollars um which to me makes sense didn't they made the first blade for less than that so blade does not blade is not a movie blade is not a movie that is that should be a big budgeted movie it should be like the batman a lot of practical effects well like the the batman was still an expensive movie but no I, i meant i meant like but even i meant like the batman in the sense of like use more practical effects than right. cgi yeah because it's not it's a it is a horror movie with a superhero in it right like that's what blade is like it should not have a two like having blade with a 200 million or 300 million dollar budget is in my opinion stupid and wasteful because yeah. it just it doesn't make sense because why would he fight cgi things well, I, I will, like the thing i would just remind people that the first i mean shazam was 90 was made for 90 million dollars and it had a ton of of superman cgi in it so like you can do it it's 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 totally doable uh if you give blade 100 million dollars they should be able to handle everything they can you know it's i think that i i think that these budgets are stupid and i understand why because there's a lot of you know vfx in it but man y'all got to figure out a way to not have them you know you gotta do like iron man 3 get him out of the damn suit you know <laughs> um speaking of iron man that's another thing that's floated in this article that they're considering a way to bring back the og avengers for another avengers movie and i mean look on paper makes sense people are just like where's captain america where's you know iron man i've heard people literally be like i don't want to watch this anymore there's no iron man in it i think that's a dumb idea personally well you know move move forward not backwards all this reaching back to the past shit look we they already did that and not to mention how the fuck are you going to afford that think of every per every member of the avengers they already know they're worth a ton of money right why would why would you spend what would amount to almost a hundred million dollars to get these people on screen because now you only have about a hundred, a hundred and fifty million dollars to actually make the movie. Uh, you can't be doing that. Not not with the way VFX costs nowadays. I as much as I would love to see that again, I just I don't see how. It seems to me like you would be not just caving to you know audience expectations. You would really be admitting defeat that you can't grow out your your universe in an interesting way. So we just got now we got to fall back on on the the you know the one winning formula. I don't I don't like that idea. I don't know what do you think, Lottie? Someone needs to pick up the phone. Why? <laughs> because I'm not gonna do it loud. But I remember, and you're laughing because you know what I'm talking about. I called this like in twenty either the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022 that they were gonna bring back the old Avengers. I was like, they're going to bring them back. And you're like, I don't, they're going to bring them back. It, I just saw it coming. I'm like, they're, they're going to use one of these movies to open up a time portal. And, might, and they might just straight up just reset the universe. You know? 
Yeah, and I'd, I'd been hearing that Secret Wars was going to be a soft reboot anyway. But still, like this, I, I have to be honest. If they do that, I, that's that may be the start of my, the end of my, my love affair with the MCU. Because that tells me, that tells me everything I need to know about creatively where they're at. It's, it's the same thing that drives me out of comics, which is, you know, they, they are like, oh, we're going to do something new. The, the fans are like, boo, bring me. And, and, and the comic fans are the worst for wanting the same fucking thing over and over and over again. Like, like there's, that's the reason why in comics they don't kill villains, because they need to be able to come back to that well again and again. And I don't, I'm like, I don't want that. I love the Avengers. I lo really, I, I love the uh, Infinity Saga. But we don't fucking need them to rehash that. If that's the way it's going to be, I'm good. I'm, I, you know, I can check out of this. I want shit to be new. I want new shit. I don't want a bunch of old shit. This is, this isn't the comic books, you know? We need, we need to keep moving forward and stop trying to look back and trying to recapture your glory. Look, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you were the captain of, of, of the high school football team back then. Don't keep trying to go back to that. Take the letter jacket off, man. You're, you know, you're, you're 45. You are not, you know, you're not team captain anymore. You're not, you're not the cheerleader squad captain anymore or, or whatever. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Move forward. Uh, I don't know. Did you, I mean, is that something you want, Lottie? I mean, maybe I, you don't have to agree with me. I just, I feel like that's, that's not the way to go. Can I be absolutely honest, man? I have grown indifferent. I'm just being honest. I am indifferent to what is happening right now. If I, I'll, I'll watch it because I, I like to support comic book stuff, but my excitement for comic book movies and a lot of this stuff kind of has gone out the window a little bit because it's just i i feel like they're they're in limbo right now they don't know what to do they're they're not they don't have a cohesive plan and even though they do have a cohesive plan it seems like that plan is just constantly changing so at this point i'm only excited for one thing comic book related and that's the spider-man video games because i see what they're doing i see the plan and i like it and right now if they bring back the uh the uh the original cast i'm not gonna be excited for it i mean it'll be it's cool to get the gang back together but mm, you know what i mean it wasn't a i i like i try to tell people this too that as much as people love to talk about how the mcu the, the uh, phase one, two, like phase one, two, and three, they, they talk about it like it was this god tier and everything was a banger. I'm like, nah, there were some bad movies in that, uh, in those movies too. Now, yeah, there's some all right. I mean, there, there, was, was, there was some all right. There, there, was some, yeah. there was some stales, there was some like, let's not pretend that the Thor's the, the first two Thor movies were not these amazing movies you know what i mean it's like yeah. i try to tell people let's not pretend that every movie in the first three phases were amazing like i told everybody if we actually want to talk about the absolute when it comes to phase one through three the true bangers was iron man one uh the first avengers all three captain america game i mean captain america movies thor ragnarok uh Black technically Panther. all Black Panther, technically all four Avengers movies, but uh, nah, Avengers nah, 2 nah, was age, sort age, of... Yeah, age of Age of Ultron was whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's better, it's better in retrospect, but still. Yeah, but it's not like, we're not like, that, that's why I'm like, guys, let's, let's not pretend this, this is just a, because yeah. that, no, that they're coming back and all of a sudden we're going to get spectacular movies I, like i think ugh. the general idea is that it built up to to a crescendo like not every yeah. note was great not every note was perfect but they it built up to a crescendo and right now there's not it's not really sh clear where where they're headed uh where that one place they may be headed is finally doing something about them the the fox stuff you know x-men and whatever we obviously deadpool 
is going to lean you know heavily into the the x-man side of things but they're finally starting you know to f- try to find writers and and directors and so forth for you know fantastic for x-men so forth could that be the the direction that heading in that direction getting them into the mcu maybe that that could be the one way to kind of right the ship um i don't know if i buy that but i mean i'm looking forward to figuring out you know seeing how they get the x-men in my question is you guys are adding a fuck ton of new characters right now. You bring the X-Men and obviously you bring in some characters some people know, but you're still just adding more toys into the into the uh the toy box. You know, you're 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 playing with with all your your action figures. You're just adding more action figures. That doesn't mean that the the story you're telling is going to get better because you're adding X-Men or or Fantastic 4. Uh, in my opinion, mm-hmm. so I mean, is that is that the solution, Lottie? No. They just need to get better, better writers, better directors. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the ingredients if the person who's cooking it sucks. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's <laughs> just it, no, we we've got we got fillet, we got you know lobster tails, we got. You know truffles and all that. We got all that. All the good expensive stuff. Which, by the way, yeah, but if you don't know how to add the seasoning, that's a great analogy. By the way, (laughs) exactly. It doesn't matter. You can get you can get all the you can get the band back. You can get all the great actors and actresses and all that back. It doesn't matter if the person who's making the movie and the people writing it suck. It doesn't matter. Like it's it's you. It's what you need to do. Right now, in my opinion, is you if they're doing it now, is slow down a little bit. Slow down. Take your time. Get actual talent. Get people who are actually talented in making movies, TV shows. They may not be the best human. They may not. Well, I won't say best human beings. They may not be the people that completely are your best friends and you you have absolutely fun conversations with. But they know they can get the damn job done. You know and. It doesn't yeah. matter. You can make a great movie. You can make a great movie with um you can make the you can make a great movie with the Marvels. You can make a great movie with Ironheart. You just got to get people who are good at writing to do it. They can make any movie can be good if the writers of the movie are good. We've seen it happen so many times where people are like, uh yeah. with, you know, those movies, oh, this movie's not that good. And they actually went and watched it. They're like, damn, this movie was actually pretty cool. Yeah. Well, and I think that m- more to the point is it's maybe this Marvel, the, the Marvel Studios method of creation, of creating movies and TV shows. Obviously, the TV show, they got to they gotta stop doing what they're doing. They got to go to traditional TV creation. But maybe the Marvel method needs to be less fix it and post and more make sure it's good in the first place you know there's there's been a lot of you know as they said in this article fit you know putting foam on the runway to help land the plane and there needs to be less of that and more intentional you know creation of of and this is such a nebulous thing to say but just intentionally creating good stuff in advance so there's less you know pressure on vfx to fix things in post there's less last minute changes there's you know reshoots they build those into there but maybe fewer reshoots because you got the shit right in the first place you know that that requires a lot you know it doesn't just require writers who are on their game but also directors who can work with the writers to make sure that that vision comes together properly while they're shooting the movie as opposed to after they see the test you know footage and be like yeah you know what this don't work so well but and that's you know, I, I, it's easy for me to say as a, as a nobody that doesn't make anything, but it does seem to me like better to, to plan to do it right the first time rather than having to fix it up later. So, uh, but either way, I mean, look, things are things are going on uh, at, at Marvel uh, Studios. It's not as well old a machine as we've been been led to believe. There's some friction and and, you know changing of the guard and changing of philosophy 
Kevin Feige's got to be part of that. He's got to be a big part of that. Uh, he's, you know, he's the guy in charge over there, but he's got to be a big part of that, of, of, you know, setting the tone for what's going on. And, and I, a lot of people say, Hey, he needs to be more hands-on. I think that's true, but also I think that's a horrible idea. He's an executive. He should have some input, but he should have trusted lieutenants that can get their shit, get this shit together without having to run to him all the damn time. And so I think that this, they, they talk about that there's a group of people there that, that are kind of in charge of the story. I think they those people, they really need to step their game up. And, uh, and the talent acquisition needs to step its game up also. So we can get some good, you know, not just good writers, but more writers, not just the ones we've already worked with that, that have, you know, that have a good track record, but also some other up and coming people who can, if they're not 100% where they need to be to, to be, you know, perfect Marvel, at least they can be trained into it. So development of talent. So anyway, uh, God, this was a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on all of these things uh, going forward to see where, you know, where Marvel uh, lands, where can they get their shit together. So anyway, uh, that's all of our thoughts on this, uh, on these topics. What did you guys think about what we had to say? Did we miss something? Uh, was there, uh, you know, something we got wrong? Do you agree? Whatever the case may be, get down to the comment section. Leave your thoughts there. Of course, you can always hit us up, supernotfunnyshow uh, at gmail.com. At supernotfunny, uh, it's supernotfunnyshow on um, on threads. I'm, I'm telling you all, you all this because uh, I'm planning to close the the, the X or Twitter account for uh, Super Not Funny Show. So go on the threads. Super Not Funny Show is really easy to find there. Also on Instagram, also on TikTok. Uh, check us out on all of our socials. Uh, and while you're uh, doing all of that, do us a favor, get down there, hit like on this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Uh, all that good stuff helps to grow this channel, helps more people to see uh, this podcast and the other videos that we produce. And if you're watching us or listening to us on a podcasting platform, leave us a, a review. It'd be cool, pretty cool of you. And uh, let people know. That's where they can uh, listen to the Supercast. And, uh, of course, I can't do this all by myself. I need my good friend Lottie uh, to give his insight uh, on all these things, uh, these comic book things. So, Lottie, where can they find you on social media? Oh, uh, You can find me on uh, my Instagram and YouTube. They're both Anukinihun. It's spelled A-N-U-K-I-N-I-H-U-N. Again, it's A-N-U-K-I-N-I-H-U-N. You got time, guys? Go check out my stuff on my Instagram and YouTube. Leave a like and subscribe or follow yeah go go show lottie some love uh he's he's uh doing this thing with his animations and um i'm i'm curious to see where it's all going this is what i, what I want to say but the the halloween one was pretty fun i liked it uh, so you guys go check that out uh so this has been uh if you can believe it episode 125 of the supercast we are just moving right along uh with next week uh, we're in anticipating uh, the Marvels. We're going to talk about uh, Invincible, which dropped an episode at uh, the season finale of, of Gen V. Loki doing his thing. Just so much stuff going on right now. It's a great time to be uh, a superhero fan uh, for movies and TV shows and so forth. So you guys come back and check out the next episode. Until then, I've been Mo, your comedy extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by anime expert, video game designer, lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace.